everybody, it's Phil Kerner, the Tool and Die Guy, and um, as promised, I'm going to tackle some of your issues that have been sent to me when I asked you to send me what you need help with, and one of my members, uh, Bob, wanted to know a few tricks for squaring up blocks, and he's having trouble uh, getting them to come out right on his mill. Now, as you can see, I've got a grinding vise here. Same principle would apply in a mill, and at the end of this video, I'm going to show you uh, some blocks I squared up. The other day, it came into me, see, I'm kind of lucky at my shop. They supply a lot of stuff to me, to me because we have a blancher grinder. They blanchard stuff flat on two sides for me, but occasionally they don't. So I'm going to assume you guys don't have a blancher grinder and, and you need to square up a piece of material. Well, here's the steps to do it, and by now you guys all know my forte is, is milling. And, you know, as a mold maker, I built a lot of uh, molds on uh, CNC equipment, 3D stuff. Uh, of course, before that we were uh, tracing the work, you know, 3D machines, duplicators. But uh, milling is my bag, and um, first of all, you got to understand uh, getting a block perfectly square on a mill, you know, it's a lot of time. And if somebody handed me this block today and said, this has got to be perfectly square, I'd square it up in a mill as close as I could, and I'd take it to a precision grinder, okay, a surface grinder, and really square it up. But Bob is complaining that no matter what he does, when he puts it in his vise, and again, he's using a nice curt vise, and that's a good vise, he can tell when he's tightening, tightening the jaw, it's kicking up. Well, that means it's out of square. So here's the tried and true method. Here's how I've been doing it for 35 years, and this is how I was taught. So you got a block that somebody hands you, and it's, let's say it's hot roll, it's all rusty and everything. Okay. First thing you do, you, you got to skim in the biggest side first, okay? It's the biggest area. So what, what I would do is, on my milling machine, I would put this in my mill, in my vise, lock it down, and take a skim cut over this side, okay? Now we've got one side flat. The trick is, on the next uh, operation, you take that side and take a magic marker and put an X on it. This is what you need to remember this side. You're going to put that up against your jaw, your fixed jaw. Once it's against the fixed jaw, we're going to introduce a roll here. Okay, and this is just a piece of cold roll, half inch diameter, and I've got a couple pieces of this at work that are much longer than this, and you want it to be about halfway up the vice jaw. And you're not going to beat this down with a hammer, of course I'm using a grinding vice, same principle though, tighten it down. Now what you've done is you've got a good curd vise, got a good grinding vise here, you've taken that flat plane that you originally established, the largest area, and now you, the roll shoves that up against your square vice jaw. The reason that works is if, if, if you didn't do it this way and just grabbed it without the roll, it can grab the piece and twist it back and forth because it doesn't know what you're trying to do. The roll takes up any unsquareness or unevenness, un, unflatness, whatever you want to call it, on this side and takes it out of the equation. It picks up a spot and shoves your piece up against your fixed jaw. Take a light skim off of that, okay? Now, remember I said mark that side with an X? Next thing you're going to do, this is where people screw it up. Flip it around, 180 degrees, down against your bottom of your vise, same deal. you still got that finished side here, the second side you did is on the bottom, again, put your roll in. Okay, tighten it down, take a skim off this side. Now you've got three sides skimmed in. Now that those three sides are skimmed in, by forcing your flat side against a known square surface, now we would open the vice jaw back up. And of course, these grinding vices with their threads take a while to open, don't they? Now you can just set the whole thing down. And of course, take a cut off the last side. Now you've got a square block. Of course, we didn't do the ends yet, and you have your choice in the mill. You can run an end mill down the sides here or you could stand it back up, I'll show you that in a minute. Now if you really want your sides to come out really square, uh, now that we've got four sides square, we've got the fifth and sixth sides left. The one way to do it would be to run an end mill down the sides. A trick to, for doing that. Now, depending on how rough this is, take an end mill and take a pass over it, take a pass over it. To really get a side square, like on this size material, it'd probably take a three quarter inch diameter end mill. A nice, brand new, sharp carbide end mill and scrape just a thou or two off each side. That'll give you a nice straight wall. A high speed end mill or even a kind of a dull carbide will push away a little bit. It won't be perfectly square. I'm not sure how square you're trying to get it, okay? So that's one way to do it. Or of course the other way to do it would be once you've got your four side square, you could always stand this up in the vise, indicate this up and down uh, straight, 
take a skim off of there, and then you could lay this down flat and, and take it off, the rest of the stock off. My theory has always been, I square up blocks first, then size them. Okay, I want I want to know they're square before I start ripping a bunch of stock off. So, and again, this is perfectly safe. What I just showed you, uh, even with a, you know, I would I have a three-inch face mill on my in my machine, and I would never think twice about doing what I just did on a milling machine. Forget in a grinder. Okay, so um, I'm show you that again. So. Um, the trick is when you're holding with this roll, don't be you know, taking you know quarter inch cuts here. You are only squeezing it on a on a on a pin here. So you're just skimming it. So that's what we're going to do is we're squaring up the block. Now of course uh, I, I'm going to get myself in front of a surface grinder pretty soon, but this all goes out the window. Of course, if you have a surface grinder, the first thing you would do if, if you wanted to, you would just lay this on the grinder on the magnet, grind that side flat, grind that side flat, and then to square it up, I would put it in my vise. And then I would simply close right up, but I don't need the roll now because I have two sides parallel, okay? So it's going to grab it right. And then what you do in a grinding operation, and just give me a little heads up for the future here, you would grind this side and then just turn your vise 90 degrees and grind that side. But you can't do that on a mill. Okay, so Bob, I hope this helps you. Uh, the trick is don't f uh, over tighten your vise when you're just squaring it up. And uh, you know, t snug it up. Hey, obviously, we don't want to throw parts out of your uh, your vise, but the trick is square it first, then take the material, the rest of the material off, and you'll have a lot better luck. So I'm Phil Kerner, the Tool and Die Guy, with uh, a Sunday night video on squaring up blocks. This is Basic Apprentice 101. First thing, apprentice. I could tell if I had an apprentice that was going to be any good as if he understood squareness. And you've seen my videos on checking squareness. Just remember, a square is six sided, not four sides. All six sides should be square with each other. Okay, so we will see you on the next video.